Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Buddhang dhammang sanghang namasami. A couple nights ago, Saturday night, uh, I gave a talk using the Four Foundations of Mindfulness as the as the uh, theme, the basis, and uh, we continue that theme, and particularly with you know, concerning meditation. Um, the uh, and uh, and mindfulness of breathing. The when we cultivate mindfulness of breathing, it is uh, um, of course it's it, it's the the most common or most frequently taught method of meditation that the Buddha himself gave and uh, and he um, particularly um, emphasized the the say the aspect of mindfulness of breathing fulfilling the four foundations of mindfulness so that uh, the using of the breath as a uh, object of awareness and attention, um, but then it is being applied uh, so that we are attending to um, the experience of of the body, uh, the experience of feeling, the experience of the mind, and the experience of, of the uh, um, objects of mind or phenomena, dhammas. So that it's one, of course, it's very flexible, but it's also, um, it gives us um, something to, uh, or a lot, not just something, but a lot to explore as we're uh, developing our m- meditation and developing our um, cultivation of of awareness in the in the uh, in the meditation, particularly for sitting meditation, uh, so that we can be. Um, you know, so often there's a there's a tendency to you know one and quite rightly be using the say the the language of meditation um, is that we're you know we're trying to one point the mind or we're trying to um, concentrate the mind into one point uh, or we're cultivating a one-pointedness of, of attention and, uh, and of course those are um, I mean, the, the, the Buddha used um, uh, those words ekagada jitta the, the uh, 
uh, which is oftentimes translated as 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 one pointed, but it's and there's a couple of things to be um, alert to in terms of of uh, how we inherit language and translation and and in how it affects us, um, and so that that c- can end up being pretty pretty tight, pretty pretty. Uh, exclusive and and that uh, and and that certainly what oftentimes what we're with we're trying to one point the mind we tried we tend to be trying to exclude uh, experience especially experience that is uh, maybe uh, distracting or or uh, or is uh, um, 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 maybe unsettling in some way, and 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 that uh, I mean certain, certainly there's a certain fair enough kind of uh, logic to it, um, but that that uh, uh, but it ends up being this idea you know, trying to establish the mind on a point that excludes and and pushes away whereas you know i think just changing the language of trying to bring the mind to a, a point that includes our experience and it's a, it's, a, it's a different way of holding attention so that allowing the because certainly when the buddha is giving instruction on mindfulness of breathing and then saying that it includes the experience of body feeling mind mind objects that's a lot you know it's not you can't be excluding too much or you can't be separating too much but that so that sense of of bringing the mind to a point that is is aware it's alert and it is um, attentive to the yeah these different ways of 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 experiencing um, what's what is arising and sometimes what is arising uh, is experiences of the body sometimes it's an experience of the they say on a feeling tone, just pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Sometimes it's experience of the mind, whether it's a mood of, 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 of desire, or, or, or a mood of, of, uh, of aversion, or a mood of loving kindness, a mood of kind of open generosity feeling. Um, um, a mood of of uh, a real kind of clear analytical investigation in terms of sort of discerning. Sometimes it's confused, it's doubting, it's uncertain. Sometimes it's very expansive. Sometimes it's very it's kind of contracted. All of those are those are you can use the the object of attention to include that and and so the, that and it's still a point it's like Ajahn Chah's a description of of uh, um, when we're meditating or when we're practicing but in particular in meditation uh, that if we try too hard to to just stop the mind, force the mind onto a onto a point, uh, then it becomes it doesn't become happy, it doesn't become settled, it doesn't become steady. I said it's uh, well, all we need to do is is he said it's like um, taking like a, a chicken, and then in Thailand, oftentimes what they'll do. It's just a, a a wicker kind of 
basket that's the weave is very loose and and uh, so they can they can see everything that's going around but it it's a contain it's only about say two three feet across and like a, it's like a bell or a dome and uh, you throw a bit of rice in there and that uh, chicken's happy to stay there um, It'll wander around a little bit, scratch here, scratch there, but it's there, and it'll. It, but if you if you tried to, to just get a stake and nail the the uh, uh, with a, a string or something and nail it to to one point, it'll struggle, it'll fight, it'll resist, and mind is similar. Uh, you 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 want to contain it, and you want it to, uh, but you want to give it enough space that it can explore and not feel oppressed. And so, with using that like mindfulness of breathing, with the four foundations of mindfulness, and that sense of of uh, one pointed. And bringing that one point, and having it a point that includes rather than is excluding, is pushing away, is forcing too much, you know, to bring it together into a point. And then it's, the mind will be happy to engage in increasing um, levels of, as it becomes comfortable with that container, it will be happy to settle further, to to um, become more more refined, more peaceful. Uh, so that that uh, just knowing how to relate to the mind skillfully, and using the meditation objects in a way that really encourages the the. Uh, the mind to to uh, to yeah, to settle on its within its object of attention, and which is another um, word that is is a, in terms of a translation of the one pointedness of mind. It's sort of sometimes it's a translator, and I think more useful. Is this u- is unification of mind, so that it is unified, and and that again is is where it the, it's including it's bringing in these other aspects of of experience um, of the body of attention of of a few and then it it. it Unifies in terms of it's not it's not internally struggling or fighting against itself, but it's unifying, it's settling. So that learning how to use the breath, uh, use that the, the as the say the underlying um, thread that ties our experience together of the experience of the body. Um, And there's, yes, we're rooted in the bodily experience. Uh, We're certainly aware and attentive to the different aspects of how we experience the body. Uh, But there's also this soothing thread of experience of that rhythm of the breath coming in, the rhythm of the breath going out. And the and as we as the mind um, um, say settles or brings a certain tranquility to that experience, uh, then it it also um, say the experience of the breath changes and it can be um, you know at first of course when it can be 
this whole rhythm of the breath, experiencing it in the whole body. Uh, but then um, we start to, uh, the mind takes an interest in being more settled or being more uh, content with a um, an experience, a, just at the, at, say at the tip of the nose, or at the at the at the abdomen, or a, a particular point of the body, or just it's it's it and it it can express itself, or the experience can just be um, it doesn't ne- even necessarily have to be you know, absolutely locked into the, our anatomical experience of the how we conceive of the body, but how we experience it. What is the experience? And how can we uh, inhabit that uh, uh, that experience? And, and the, with the, the breath is, is uh, is also um, like with the, just the um, it's not just sort of yeah, air molecules coming into the, the the physical body. I mean, it's also especially with the the like anapana, um, the the that word is also used in let's say like Hindu tradition of like a prana as a I mean, it literally means breath, but it's also, it's kind of life force. It's also kind of energy. So it's an energetic, the energetics of existing from one moment to the next is experienced through the, through the breath. Are uh, they, but also, so it can, can be, again, one is not trying to lock into concretizing uh, uh, the breath and, and sometimes just being able to experience it just the energy of of that breathing in life and breathing out life and existing being uh, and that uh, mindfulness of breathing I mean, it's a, it's um, there's many different ways of of approaching that so this yeah, again the sense of not getting too locked in and um, paying attention to that say so yeah, that inclusion unification allowing the the uh, the mind the heart to to settle into awareness alertness this quality of Knowing clearly, and and allowing the mind to brighten with that, and so that using the experience of the body, using the experience of feeling, and uh, of course the Buddha, when he's giving ins- uh, the instructions of mindfulness of breathing. Um, I'm, the very first instruction that it, that he gives in terms of feeling is uh, experiencing joy. I breathe in. Experiencing joy. I breathe out. That's the the uh, the, uh, the that experience of what is pleasurable. That is, um, yeah, it's joyful. It's it's. Uh, there's a certain exhilaration that one feels in a very positive way, um, and because that's very one, it's very uplifting, it's very brightening to the mind, it's energizing uh, to the body and the mind, and to to, to paying attention to that. Um, and the Buddha then moves into a bit more analytical 
um, you know, experiencing uh, the uh, um, what's you call uh, terms that jitta sankara the the formations of the mind, the mental formations, formations of the mind, the cons the constructs of the mind, and the building blocks of the mind. What is it that constructs the mind? And and that is that feeling and perception. Uh, those are fundamental to the mind. We don't. Uh, there, every mind moment has has um, a feeling tone. It has a, uh, a kind of memory association perception. I mean, these are all mushed together. They're not. You know, uh, there, that's a, a particular function, a sanya, uh, the ability to uh, to have associate, association, associative memory. Uh, and per, that's how we perceive things. We have a name for it. We have a label for it. But it's it it, it it's there. It's it's sort of. Uh, uh, but it's important to experience that to know it. To be sensitive to uh, that, and because that's what starts—that's what starts the ball rolling in terms of our proliferation. Whether it's analytical thought, whether it's um, visual imagery, or whether it's you know the moods of the mind, they're, 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 they arise out of pretty fundamental and simple building blocks. Uh, those and uh, that feeling, tone, and perception. So to be able to investigating, being sensitive to, being uh, discerning uh, how that works, uh, what we call mind, and what we make out of all that. Uh, it, it's not that. Complicated. I mean, you know, of course, it ends up complicated, but it's um, it, uh, it it doesn't begin that way. And uh, to be able to come back to that root, and when we do that, we start to experience uh, this thing we call mind. Uh, we're sensitive to the mind in a, in a very different way. Because um, usually we, of course, uh, whatever mood we have, it's it's always, you know, that's that's my mood. I'm feeling uh, this is this is my thoughts. This is my my mood. This is my opinion. And, and but it's just seeing it more in a causal process, and that allows us to not get so entangled. It's not again. It's not pushing away. It's not excluding, um, but it's by being settled within that, with having a a, a point of say of unification, where there's a stability and a settled quality. Uh, the the mind doesn't just follow impulsively with the, the impressions that arise. It has, and it's, that's why it's important to, you know, to settle, to relax, to have this experience of well-being, because then we can be content within that experience of, of well-being. This is one of the things. One of the things about gladdening the mind, I breathe in, gladdening the mind, I breathe out, and that being uh, giving oneself that attention, um, the the Pali words abhi pamoja yang, pamoja 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 yang pamoja is uh, is like delight and api is an amplifier so it's like this is it's not sort of 
low-level delight. This is, you know, you're, you're gladdening the mind, and enjoying that process of just breathing in, breathing out, being present with that, the whole experience of body, of mind. Um, and yes, and it's allowing the mind to settle, allowing the mind to release its habits of just following likes and dislikes, following the the moods of confusion or or restlessness, and um, getting caught in dullness, um, and uh, yeah, that's and that is a that's a liberating. Quality. We're liberating the mind, giving it the opportunity to see clearly, see itself clearly, see the experience clearly, see the world clearly. And it's a, a, uh, um, And then that's where the Buddha transitions into the, uh, say, the last section of Dhammas, of phenomena. That's anicca, anicca nupasana, um, uh, investigating um, or seeing, seeing clearly, seeing deeply, impermanence. Seeing deeply, experiencing clearly, uh, Im- impermanence as I breathe in, as I breathe out, allowing that to be an object of attention. And these, these that 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 internalizing, and it's not just an intellectual labeling. Oh, well, that's impermanent. That's impermanent. That's impermanent. Uh, it's a letting it come into the heart and settle. Oh, this is impermanent. This is uncertain. This is a not sure experience. This is changing. This is arising and is ceasing. And it's and it's everything. And it's not and to a certain extent it can it might especially from the the sense of self or the sense of our habitual um, desires and and uh, and biases I, that could be really unsettling, but when it's experienced or seen from this place of inclusion and an interest in in truth, then it's extremely. It's liberating. It's it is, uh, and there's this is incredible feeling of of spaciousness and 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 light arise. So that and yeah, get allowing. But when we turn our attention in certain ways, it lends itself to to a releasing and and a. Um, it's just and and the Buddha makes it explicit in the in the discourse uh, that uh, that viraga nupasana uh, that seeing uh, experiencing a uh, dispassion or fading away and uh, it's a it's a fading away of the impulses of the mind it's not a fading away of awareness. And uh, the quality of knowing clearly. Uh, it's not a fading away of uh, say, a deep um, yeah, contentment with truth. Um, it's a, and that opens the, 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 the space for it. So, so there's a contemplating, 
contemplating an impermanence and it contemplating dispassion, contemplating cessation, ceasing, allowing things to cease, contemplating relinquishment uh, and patinisaga uh, is a is a um, see, it's a relinquishment, but it's a it's a letting go. Uh, it's of of uh, the self program, uh, a, a letting go of that the the I making, the mind making, uh, that the the program of uh, propping up the sense of me, and when we are relinquishing that each in breath and again the breath is the is the is the anchor the thread of continuity uh, and we can release into the sense of 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 uh, things being as they are and it's like Lumpa Sumedho's refrain of, it's like this, and it's, it's like this. And because the mind's always going out trying to uh, either agreeing, disagreeing, wanting, not wanting, uh, liking, disliking, but to come back to this a clear uh, experience, it's like this. And then the breath coming in, the breath going out, the experience of the moment as it is. And that uh, it opens, this is what opens the doorways into the, into the, uh, um, into the experience of, of uh, a cessation of suffering, an ending of, of our, um, Propensity to complicate things, and that's the uh, it's one of the things the Buddha I mean, talking of the uh, uh, qualities that arise from 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 practice and and um, uh, to 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 know uh, what is is. Uh, uh, Okay, what is a, when the when the mind our experience is according with with dhamma, and that that's that sense of of nippa uh, pancha, uh, just non proliferation, non complication, uh, and uh, when the mind delights in non complication, and uh, there's a. Uh, that's a, a quality that's to be to be delighted in. There's still the experience of the body, feeling, mind, and mind objects, but it's from from a very very different place. And this is our uh, our uh, you say the practice of meditation, the cultivation of this path. Uh, of course, the Buddha gave us these these tools, these 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 teachings, um, and it's up to us to to uh, cultivate them, to develop them, to make much of them, to offer that for reflection this evening.